Bats are the only flying mammals capable of true and sustained flight. Their forelimbs are adapted as wings covered with a thin membrane. They have a diaphragm, mammary glands and hair on their body. Bats find their way by sending out sound waves through mouth and measuring that distance from objects, a process called echolocation. As you all are aware, the world was hit by a pandemic uh, called COVID-19. This is a disease that disrupted lives globally. My name is Dr. Gishofi Motera. I'm currently the director at the Institute of Primate Research, which is a premier biomedical primate center whose mandate is to improve human health. And we do this by developing drugs and vaccines for diseases and conditions that affect humans. Now, when the world was affected by the COVID-19, um, organizations, research institutions, pharmaceutical companies embarked on developing vaccines and interventions. Now, this was well done in the Western world. However, in Africa, because the governments have not invested or emphasized on interventions in research, very little was done. But I'm happy to say that the government through the National Research Fund, which is the government arm that finances research in this country, put in a bit of money into addressing the issue of COVID-19. As a result of that, IPL is administering two projects. One of them is involved in understanding the severance and the infection of the disease in terms of where the disease came from and what we can do about it. The other one is looking at um, how we can intervene in terms of interventions. So IPL is partnering with other research institutions and the universities so that we can be able to understand the disease more and we can also develop interventions which could be drugs or vaccines, or a combination of both. More importantly, it's on how we can avoid or manage such outbreaks in the future. When the pandemic uh uh, started that's last year 2020 uh, due to the COVID-19 outbreak the national government that the Kenya government uh, advertised for a call through the National Research Fund for a grant to be able to help us researchers be able to do some work and contribute to the government effort so that we can be able to mitigate or be able to reduce the effect of the pandemic so through that we did apply as an institute, and as a PI, we got the grant uh, through the National Research Fund. And today we are here, cut us of that, cut us of the government, and the support that's coming from the government. We are here at uh, GED today, and uh, the previous days we have been at uh, the south coast in Kuala, the, at the different caves for which we are getting samples from the different types of bats that are found here in the coast. And the reason why we are here, we know that bats are everywhere in this country, but the reason why we are here is because there are some specific bats that are only found in this region. And when we get opportunity, we will also be able to move to other regions to be able to sample these bats. And the purpose for the samples is actually to go to the lab 
and analyze the potential bio risks that they could be carrying in form of viruses. The best way to do that is through the disease surveillance. Through the seed surveillance, we can be able to know what's out there, be able to prevent or be able to take precaution, and so we can avoid uh, just being taken by surprise. So we don't want the disease coming to, to the human population without us knowing where and when. Kwa majina yangu na itua Simeon Kajengo Fundi, na nakaa katika umko wa Jimba, Jimba Gede, nyumbani ni Panga Yambo Village. Na nimekuja hapa makuruhu kev kuwaleta hawa wageni wangu ambao wamekuja kwa research. Uh, na si hao peke yake kuna hata wageni wengine hata kama ni wazungu wana walitembeza kwa hii kev kuja kufanya research yao na hata wengine kutembea tu kwa kuona bats ambao kuna bats aina tofauti tofauti lakini kwa hao ambao wamekuja kwa sahi wamekuja kufanya research yao na nimeona raha sana ama nimefurahikia kuwakaribisha kwa hii kevu. Do you hold these bats some people do some people like touching them holding them maybe when people like you come for that search yeah. they are just kaka up and wana kajanga hapa hivi kuna wanyama wanaishi apart from the bats kuna aida wana mwingine wanakuja kuisha yeah kama chakol yeah. uh, some insects adonis mm-hmm. uh, monkeys wana kana kuja huko in direction you kuna nyanya nyingine hapa ama hapa ndani ya mimi hapa ndani ya kuna wana kaa pakali area Ah. So the jackals come and uh, feed on those bats. Mm. It's a whole ecosystem mm. Uh, mm. with nutrients. Mm. Uh, the bats uh, release mm. at guano, the nutrients go to the environment. They support the other organisms as well, mm. including predators. Mm. Those jackals talk about uh, predators that come and feed on them, including mm. snakes. Mm. Oh, snakes also. Including snakes, yeah, of course, snakes also feed on, uh, on those bats. Oh, okay. And eagles and, uh, and, and, and all owls, they come here and feed on them. Okay. Mm. So thank you very much. Now we can go and start catching bats. Now bats are very very important in the ecosystem. Very important because uh, they play uh, key roles some actually termed as uh, kitten species because uh, they disperse seeds, leading to revegetation of disturbed habitats and regenerations of those plants they feed on, uh, including many tropical plants like the rocket tree, uh, like the figs, and so many others. So they help in forest regeneration. Secondly, fruit buds dis- uh, pollinate flowers of many, many plants, including the so-called African tree of life, the baobab at Ansonia Digitata. Thirdly and very importantly is the fact that uh, insectivorous bats. So 70% of uh, African bats are insectivorous. It means they feed on insects. And by feeding on insects, they naturally help to control population of insects. A single bat has been found in one hour. A single bat in one hour can feed on between 600 insects to 1,000 insects in one hour. And if they live in a colony like the cave we just came from here, it means in that one hour or in a single night, they are taking out tons of insects. We know that 60% of the current, or what we call uh, the human imagined infection diseases, spills or comes from the wildlife. In Kenya, wildlife forms part of the bigger part of our GDP. So we highly interact with those animals. Anytime we go to the, uh, to the park, anytime we, we just, uh, with our animals or ourselves, we go to the for recreation purposes, we are highly interacting with those animals. So we don't know exactly what we're exposing ourselves to. 
bats have been documented for many years to harbor potential viruses, including the rabies and other severe viruses that are known to cause the disease in human. Even the current coronavirus, there's a debate whether it came from the bats or the pangolins. So we are yet to exactly be able to know who, what are the origin or the source. So part of this surveillance is to try and see, is it a possibility that coronavirus is with us here or it was here with us in animals? Or there is a, what you could call, corona-like or a cyst of another virus that has a potential to mutate combine and then become another what we could call monster or severe form of virus that could cause a pandemic or a severe outbreak in the community. So cut us of that government support and as a institute of research, a primary research, we are here to do to carry out that disease surveillance to be able to get to know the circulating potential viruses either in the humans or animals that may the birds may be playing part of that a spread or part of that ecosystem. We know that from various publications that bats have been linked to various viruses that have been found in them. And in this country, we are making efforts just to document what exactly do we have in these bats. From the context of One Health, we know that bats interact with humans and uh, also uh, wildlife and livestock and we know even some bats are fruit bats that eat the same fruits that we also eat and uh, given that these bats have been linked to various pathogens especially viruses it is very important that we unravel the, the different type of pathogens or viruses that are found in these bats so that we are able to know the potential risks that we are actually uh, exposing our people or we are being exposed to and this is going to guide the government of Kenya in terms of control uh, of these pathogens and also advising the communities on how, whether they should live close to these uh, bats or they should live far from these bats. Bats are known to, uh, to forage quite a, a distance and by virtue of Moving from uh, the where they are roosting in the cave here, like here in the coral cave, they can move from uh, two kilometers to even 90 kilometers a night. So they can come back with the potential virus, or they can take those virus to a community somewhere. And that one can now start become a foci, where now it becomes the spread of the virus to the bigger or larger community. And it becomes our small Wuhan here, because we know in China, the virus started from a small market. And just from that small market, it's now global. So even here we don't know what we're having. And so that's the basis and the importance for continuity or continuous disease surveillance in wildlife. This effort has been documented in many other countries, but also we are happy that the government is recognizing the fact that the scientists can contribute to controlling the pandemics in this country. We don't know when the next pandemic will come and we don't know where it will come from. But in this study, we, are, we will be able to give advice on what we have, not only in bats, because we are supposed also to deal with non-human primates. Because we know that the non-human primates could also be potential reservoirs to these uh, viruses. So, at the end of the day, we will probably discover even new pathogens that, are, that are, have not been documented in this country. And the way the government has approached this issue is actually in the context of multi-institutional, multidisciplinary, whereby we have different experts from different institutions coming together and working on this project to be able to provide information that is required for the community and for the nation at large. So my name is uh, Dr. Paul Webala. I am a wildlife biologist um, 
generally I study wildlife, but uh, specifically I specialize in birds. I've been studying birds for the last uh, 20 years. Um, I started studying birds uh, because uh, they are so diverse. They are the second most uh, diverse group of mammals after rodents. Uh, they are part and parcel of uh, biodiversity. They are part and parcel of that jigsaw puzzle. Who eats who? Uh, and, and if you remove them, then the ecosystem is likely to collapse. My name is uh, Professor Peter Kenyanjui. I'm from the Department of Biochemistry, University of Nairobi, where I've been teaching for the last many years. And I'm here because we are collaborating with the team in IPR in advancing scientific knowledge. And one of the goals is advancing science in knowing the kind of birds we have and the kind of uh, viruses or other pathogens they carry. The other reason why I'm here, part of our other mandate is to train students. And this project, which is funded by the government of Kenya, is also training some students. So I have an interest in training the future scientists in this country. My name is Millicent Bungay from Masai Mara University, an undergraduate student. I'm aspiring to study bat ecology in the near future and I've been in the field with the IPR team. Uh, it has been a good learning experience to, to work with them. I've learned about uh, analysis of viruses from bats that can be transmitted to humans. My name is Irene Karegi. I work at the Institute of Primate Research and also I am a master's student at Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. I find this experience is so good, uh, relating from the uh, lab work and coming back to the field. So um, being here doing the whole surveillance of SARS-CoV, MERS-CoV and all the corona-like fa family viruses on the bats is a very good experience because I have always known that bats are very scary animals but now coming to think about it they're very friendly and they're just part of our ecosystem and this opportunity has made me learn more about the bats different type of species where they live how they even forage hi my name is david kirago I'm a student at Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology and also I'm affiliated with the Institute of Primate Research. Uh, me being a, a student of a master's student in molecular biology and uh, bioinformatics, having this exposure and experience with fieldwork, collecting samples from bats uh, and uh, with all this experience of trying to identify some of the different species of bats. These are some of the learning experience that I've gotten. And uh, recently, um, I was in a project where we were trying to characterize spike proteins and at the same time trying to understand some of the pathogens that are found in Rhinophola species. So having this fieldwork experience was amazing because first of all, I, I was able to see Rhinophella species by eyesight and try to know which, which are some of these species that are found in Kenya, specifically both in north and uh, southern coast. We thank the government of Kenya for having uh, ensured that we work uh, as different institutions together, bringing all the expertise that are required to enable us to learn the different viruses together with the ecology of these bats so that we can come up with the information that will help the government and also the community. The institutions that are involved in this project include the Institute of Primate Research, that is leading this project. We have other institutions that are uh, co-investigators, including the University of Nairobi, uh, Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology, the Ministry of Health, uh, CALRO, and other institutions, including Masai Mara, that uh, has been represented here. We are also happy that uh, this program is actually providing opportunities for students both masters and undergraduate. It was a very nice experience, right? Right, David, I agree with you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.